What's up guys? So today we are gonna be completely redoing the concealment coat rack that I did a long time ago. Great coat rack, nice looking piece of furniture. Great for any entryway. You can choose to use a magnet or not to operate the lock. And it has a hidden compartment inside. So if you wanna learn how to do this, we're gonna start completely from scratch, build one from the ground up, so stay tuned. So after the last video that I did on the floating concealment shelf, right here, I actually walked through step by step, you know, how to build that shelf. There are a lot of people out there that still like to have plans in their hand while they're building it. You can use these videos. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to make everything. I'm gonna give you all the dimensions, everything. But again, some people still like to have the paper copies to read. So check out the link. I'm actually gonna be putting the plans up for this build that we're gonna be discussing today, as well as the concealment shelf that we built a couple of weeks ago. So if you're interested in that, that's there. If not, I'm going to tell you how to do it all anyway. You don't have to buy any of these plans. It's just there for the folks that like to actually go buy plans and not buy some random guy talking on a video. So at the end of this video, I'm actually going to be showing you how to install these RFID locks. These things are super awesome. Uh, back when I originally made this video, they're very expensive. You could not really afford to buy them and uh, actually put them into a build and sell them. But that has changed now. I think this one's 30 some bucks and they're super cool. If you're looking for kind of like a wow factor to, uh, to bring in customers or if you're making these for friends and family, you definitely want these versus the uh, magnetic locks. These are fine. There's nothing wrong with those. But this just has the the cool factor. The thing that I like about this company, and I bought these in the past, I bought the cheap ones off of Amazon, and they were junk. And then you couldn't find any type of customer support, anything like that. I actually get these from Lock Connection. This, this video is not sponsored by Lock Connection, but it's the same place that I get all of my dampers, uh, struts, all of my hardware. And the reason why I keep going back with them is because of this quality product. I bought dampers, I bought struts, I bought all those different things from other companies and they ended up being junk. The awesome thing about this company is customer service. I can call them up, they're right there. Or I can send them an email, they will actually answer. So if you must ever have any questions, ever have any issues with any of this stuff, you wouldn't have to go through Amazon even though you're buying them on Amazon. You could contact the company themselves and they're awesome with customer service. So I'll actually put links to this one below. They have several different styles. I'll put links to their customer service below. If you decide to go this route, excellent wow factor. Then if you ever have any issues with the install or with cards, anything like that, then you can just give them a call. All right, guys, so let's get started on this project. You are looking at it. This is the material that you need to make that product. If you're watching this video to make money with woodworking, this is an excellent product. Again, everyone loves a good concealment shelf. And the thing is, it's functional furniture. So even if you do not want this as a concealment shelf, you can still use it as a nice coat rack. It, it's a nice piece of furniture. I'm gonna be doing this just like we're mocking one up. So this is gonna be a prototype. Everything here except for the top that I'm gonna be using is plywood. And again, I say maybe your first one, you should build it like this. Do not use your expensive wood or your higher priced wood for your prototype because you're gonna be doing a lot of adjustments. So uh, just keep in mind, this is the prototype for your final product. You'll be using solid wood and you may be doing a couple of things a little different and I'll tell you all about that as we go. So this is everything that you're gonna need for the front plate. What I have done is I have already put a rabbit on the inside of this. So this front plate is going to be designed like a picture frame and then the insert will actually go into the back. So this is what the rabbit looks like once it's cut. This is a one half of an inch rabbit all the way around because my insert is three eighths inch material. 
and it's called beadboard or wainscoting, whatever you want to call it, but it will actually have that texture to it. Now this stuff's pretty flimsy, so it uh, can warp easy. So just FYI on that, on how you store this. So let me show you how I put the rabbit on these pieces of wood again. These are gonna be for the front door that folds down. There's several different ways that you can make a rabbit for picture framing or so on and so forth. I'm gonna show you how to do it on a table saw. You can do this with a router. You can do this with a shaver. You can do it several different ways, but for this project, I'm gonna show you on a table saw because if you're a beginner, it's probably the closest thing that you're gonna have. So I'll do it with that instead of routing all of this out. Here we go. So the rabbit I put on the material that I just showed you is one half inch deep by one half inch tall. So it's one half square that I'm taking out. In order to do that on a table saw, just raise the table saw blade up to one half of an inch, find the tallest point on your blade, and then move your backstop in to where the outside of your blade is one half of an inch. So it's as easy as that to put the rabbit joints in this two and a half by three quarter inch material. Again, I'm leaving these pieces long. I'm not gonna cut them to length just yet. We'll get to that shortly because they will be on 45s. And then this third one is actually gonna be um, the parts that we're gonna use for the two sides of this door that folds down. So we're gonna call this the front plate. And again, the other part for the front of the door is this wainscoting bead board is what I call it, but uh, everything will be in the description as far as the sizes on that. So this is your entire front plate or the front door that folds down. I'm gonna call that the front door from here on out, just so we know. Um, okay, so the next part is gonna be, this is again, two and a half inch material. This is gonna be what I'm gonna call a divider it is gonna go in the bottom. So you'll have your coat hooks here, and then your divider, and then your front plate, or the front door, will actually sit on top of this. So let's talk about these side arms really quick. So as you can see, I have one side arm that I have actually already made this cut on. These are 16 inches long, by three inches, wide and they will actually go on the outside. I just added this just as a little decorative piece just so it won't be like a sharp edge sticking off the front because it's actually going to sit on the side. So we'll do the same thing to this one shortly. And then we have our top board which will go like this. Okay so I put this little chamfer bevel on what this is going to do is going to make it a little more decorative and it's going to keep the front door whenever it goes to close, you'll see this here in a bit, from hitting the front edge if this was completely square. It does not have to be this little 45 that I put on. It can be any type of uh, design that you would like. You can route this out all the way around or you can do what I did and just put this little bevel on with the table saw. Here's a little clip of me doing that. Okay, so that's our top. And our top is going to be four and a half inches by 44 and a half. And again, once you start to build these, if you decide whatever type of wood that you're wanting to use, be it pine, be it walnut, be it whatever that you would like, oak, still this back plate, this is a pretty large back plate. I would still recommend using cabinet grade plywood for this uh, because it's all going to be hidden. It's all going to be inside except for what's on the bottom. And if you would like the bottom edge covered, that's all that you would have to do is get some edge banding to match whatever that you're doing. But no one's going to see this bottom edge. So this is a 16, a 42 and an eighth. So first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and put some arms on this back plate. All right, so for the arms, Again, they're going to be sitting on the side of the back plate, just like this. So it would actually give you a look of 
something like that. So what I've done here is just measured up one and three quarter, then one and a half from the bottom and made a mark. One and a half, one and three quarter. Whatever angle that comes out to be, go ahead and cut it on your miter saw. Let's go ahead and just measure this out on this next one. So we're going one and three quarter in. Okay, and then I said we're gonna go one and a half up make our mark and then let's draw a straight line between those two marks and then we'll make that cut on the miter saw okay now we have our two arms cut 16 inches long we've put our little bevel on here our design whatever you want to call it And for this build, we're gonna be using glue and one and a half inch brad nails. Now what I would recommend you do is once you make this out of solid wood, go ahead and glue brad nail and also pre-drill, put in a screw and then a dowel and cut that off. That will sturdy everything up quite a bit. So now that we have both of our arms on, this divider will actually sit right in here. I'm not gonna put this on yet until we have our door made, just in case we need to make some little fine tune adjustments. But what we can do is go ahead and put some pocket holes in the ends of both of these. We'll go ahead and get that out of the way. And there we have it. And I'm actually gonna put a couple more going down on the inside, going down this way. That way, whenever we secure it to this back plate, it's secured all the way around. Now let's get started on the front door. Okay, so for our front door, we want it to cover everything that we have just made, our frame that we just put together, the side arms. This door will actually cover that as well. So we want this to be 10 and 7 eighths wide. That's gonna be our door frame. And we're gonna want it 43 and an eighth inches long. So let's get that made. So we're gonna start by cutting our 45s on our two long boards. So we want it 43 and 1 eighth long. That is gonna be tip to tip from our 45s that we're gonna make. Okay, so we have our two boards cut at the 43 and an eighth. So now we're gonna cut our inside boards to go on the outside edges at 10 and 7 eighths. Again, tip to tip. Okay, now we have our outside edges of our frame. And the way that this is all going to go together, like this, and then we will have our bead board that will actually set down inside like that. So let's go ahead and get this put together. And to put this together, I'm gonna to go ahead and use pocket holes in these corners. You can use whatever type of joinery that you would like, um, but for this project, pocket holes are super handy. Okay, so do not do what I just did. I put a pocket hole in the end of each one. I've built tons of these things and I just made a mistake. So do not get down on yourselves when you make a mistake. No big deal, cut new pieces. However, you actually do not need them at all on the side boards if you put them in the two top boards. So mistakes happen, let's just roll on with it.
Okay, so once it's all together, this is your front plate, except you won't have these two extra holes. Um, we'll go ahead and sand it, up, sand it all down to where it's smooth and clean up any wood glue that you would have coming out because like I said in the last video, wood glue on fresh wood does not stain. So we need to get it cleaned up. It'll leave a little mark there. Now, since I was only able to get one pocket hole in each one of these because the material is pretty, pretty thin as far as the width goes, I'm also gonna put some nails in the ends just to mate up the, the tips of the 45s. Okay, so now we're gonna put our beadboard into our picture frame that we've just made, which is actually the front door. All right, this is what it looks like. Now, okay, so for when we're installing the plate, I would actually recommend maybe using a quarter inch piece of ply to cover this cabinet grade plywood, stainable, uh, to cover up your pocket holes and we'll actually hold this into place. I'm just gonna use some staples for now because again, this is a prototype. You can use nails, you can use picture frame tacks, whatever that you would like. Now that the front's made up, we need to go ahead and drill our hinge pockets in the back. Again, like in the last video, I'm using this handy little uh, tool by Craig and the settings will be at three millimeters. And I'm going to put one six inches in from each end. Then we'll put the center one at 21 and a half. Gotta love making sawdust. Smells like money to me. Now this is actually where our hinges will go. So these are three quarter overlay Blum hinges. Again, I'll throw a link in the bio. They will set right in. I'm gonna go ahead and get those installed. All the hinges are installed. And this is where we're at. All right, let's get our base back over here. So with our base back on our work surface here, and this is still not attached. Just gonna go like this whenever it is. Let's go ahead and put our top on. The bevel side is gonna go in. And we're gonna leave a half of an inch of overlay on the outside edge. Now what we will actually do is, for this demonstration, we're just gonna glue this up. I'm gonna put some finished nails in there. Again, just like the other parts, if you're doing this for a customer, I would go ahead pre-drill and then countersink some holes and actually put screws in this and then put a plug in every screw hole. Half of an inch overlay. And again, I have a lot of glue here that I need to clean up. And again, for this top, that's all this is, is a piece of ash, just because I had it kind of laying around. Um, but the top, you know, needs to be nice and solid. So again, clean up any glue. So now this is where we're at. Okay, so now let's put our front plate on and just kind of get an idea of where this divider actually needs to go. 
Now you want to leave just a bit of a gap at the top. That way that this can kind of hinge open. Make sure that all of our measurements are good. Get it squared up. All right, now let's move the bottom in. Now I'm gonna mark this. All right, we'll set this to the side. So with our divider where it needs to be, I just have a clamp on one end just to hold that uh, still while I'll go ahead and I'll put my pocket screws in. And these are one and a quarter inch pocket screws. So with this done, now that's all we need to do is attach our door front to this. And the front will sit in the center of this board. Just like any hinges, once we get this installed, they will need to be adjusted to make sure that the door front is actually square. These are three quarters of an inch screws. Okay, so let's close it and see how it fits. Again, I haven't adjusted any of these hinges yet, so there's probably gonna be quite a bit of adjustment to do. Ah, see how tight it is right there? So I can tell already we need to lift these hinges up just a bit. So this hinge you can see a little bit of a gap. We need to adjust it back. Maybe this one in. All right, and this is where we're at. We've got the hinges adjusted. Uh, takes a little bit of time moving them up and down, in and out to kind of raise this up to get a nice edge for it to open. You do not want it dragging the top. You want it to open smoothly. And the hinges will actually hold this front door open. There it is. Now let's put some locks in here. So to install this locking mechanism, it's gonna be a little different than our last build because everything's gonna be kind of reversed. So this one will actually take some trial and error on getting everything in the exact right spot, but you want this part, the actual lock, the magnetic part, you want it locked, and we're gonna line it up with this hinge, because we know that hinge is in the center, and we want it to where it barely misses the edge. Now that I have that, I'm going to mark this, I'm just marking these corners and then we'll peel this tape off. Okay, now that's just that 3M tape uh, that was on the back of these. So I'm not going to put any screws or anything in this just yet until we know that this is going to work because for some reason if it doesn't, we can take it off. So to test this, let's find our little magnet. And there it is. So we know that the, the locking mechanism itself actually works well. So now the hard part is finding out exactly where the base needs to go. Okay, so we want this edge, whenever it's open like this, to be able to catch and lock into the bottom of this piece. So I'm gonna measure off and just see what it has to be. It looks like an inch and a quarter. So once we have our lock and latch in place, we can actually go ahead and put the two screws in that come with each one of these. So if you've decided to go with the RFID locking system, it's gonna come not only with all the mounting hardware instructions, uh, but it's gonna come with these two parts. So this is essentially your locking mechanism. Uh, that operates with the card. And 
and it's going to come with the latch. The cool thing about these is once the battery starts getting low, I think there's like 1,500 uses out of uh, a few trip away batteries in this thing. Uh, but once you get down to like your last 100 or so, it will actually start to give you several beeps in a row. Um, that's your warning. Go ahead and change out the batteries in it, okay? So let me show you how to install this thing. But this is how this should sit, just like this flat part of your bolt and this is flat as well. So if we flip this over and we find the center, which is going to be 22 inches, which is also going to be 22 inches up here, and we have our center mark, then we know that as this door shuts, it will actually snap into place here. So what I found just by messing around with this, you need about a, you need one half of an inch off of the edge in order for this to um, to mate up correctly. Because again, we're using this for unconventional styles. A lot of these are made for cabinet doors that open side to side, so you kind of have to uh, to mess around with it just a little bit. But I've already done that for you. Um, for this particular model, uh, you need a half of an inch from the edge. And then what I'm going to do for this, because we know that this is three quarters of an inch. Whenever it's closed, in order to find out where this needs to sit, I'm actually just gonna take a piece of scrap three quarter. I'm gonna close my door and then I'm gonna make a mark. And this is, you know, we can erase this. This is just a pencil mark. Okay, and from that mark, I'm gonna put this on the edge and this is going to be representing the thickness of our door. And then I'll make a mark on the back. So now we know where this edge will be whenever the door is closed. It's going to be a lot easier for mounting the latch because the latch needs to be flush with the edge of this door so it'll catch. So let's get these installed. I'm going to go ahead and take the batteries out of this. Twenty two inches to center. Pre drill, pre drill everything. Flat edge with the little rollers out. We have our latch installed. Now let's install the actual reader. And again, the cool thing about one of these is it can actually read through over an inch of material. So um, they're pretty neat. Let's put our batteries back in. Okay, so now to test this, and make any final adjustments that you need to to your latch. The, this latch actually has a little bit of play as long as you drill your pilot hole straight up to the center. Uh, you can move it in and out once the screws are not tightened completely, but uh, they're in. Then once you get it exactly where you want it, you can tighten those up. But we test that our lock, make sure that it's all good to go. It's awesome. And we're gonna be listening for a little bit of a click There it was, that's locked. So instead of the magnet and having to keep up with the magnet and all of that, like I said, you can put this in your wallet, you can put it wherever. Uh, you can have it underneath of a decoration on top or whatever you'd like to do. Again, they make key fobs as well, so you'd have one on your keys hanging here. Unlocks. Locks back. So we're locked, unlock, there's the lock and it will actually shut while it's locked, unlock. And that's it. They're super cool. Like I said, they're getting a lot cheaper. Do not go with a lot of the junk that you see on Amazon. 
go with a reputable company. Like I said before, I'm, I'm not sponsored by this company, but I'm going to throw their link into the bio because I know that they make good stuff. Uh, like I said, this one's like 30 some bucks. Um, you know, if you're making these for friends, family, or if you just want to kick it up a notch, this is the way to go. They also have some cheaper ones with a little different design, but these seem to be the most sturdy and interesting type. And they're fine. And like I said, if you want to spice things up even more, these little LED lights uh, will actually, they're 3M sticky tape, and then you just put your batteries in and you can mount these inside, not here because it'll catch there, but you can mount these inside. Uh, and then once this door opens, they'll actually kick on and illuminate your firearm or whatever that you're concealing. Uh, super cool for, you know, for a five or $6 LED light. Again, go with a reputable company. There's tons of these out there, but half of them are just absolute junk. You'll get them, they won't even work whenever you get them in. So now, so all we need is the foam and coat hooks. Uh, the hardware for this thing is actually one of the most expensive parts. Hardware is very expensive. If you get on Amazon, you can actually find some pretty decently priced uh, coat hooks. I'll try to put a link to that in the bio as well. The foam for my last one, I actually, since I had some of the, since I had some of the one inch foam, I just used two pieces of that. Just like our last build, you will have to customize this out to actually fit where these latches go. It's gonna need a little piece cut out and also cut out around where these hinges are. So that way it'll fit nice and snug. And what I would do if I was sending this to the customer, they make a foam adhesive. I'll try to throw that into the description as well, but it's just like a spray adhesive or you can just tell the customer once they get it customized, because they need to take this out to customize it, they can spray the backboard with the foam adhesive, put it in, and it'll actually stick there. So we don't have to worry about anything falling out or anything like that. And whenever you go to mount this to the wall, you actually just drill on 16 inch centers down through the back, and they can actually screw in before they put their foam in. All right guys, so again, for anybody that uh, needs needs to actually hold a plan in their hands to build something that is perfectly fine. Some people learn by watching, some people learn by reading. If you need a plan, check out the link in the bio. I'm also throwing in a plan for the uh, other concealment shelf as well. I'm getting those made as we speak. So I probably won't publish this video until I get those. So until next time, guys, go out there, build something, be creative, make that money. See ya.